So this is the best gun that I absolutely refuse to carry, at least according to y'all, because every time I do a top five or a best of carry gun list, I get comments all the time. Like, hey, your list sucks because it doesn't have this gun on it. Well, we're gonna talk about this gun. I'm gonna revisit this gun. And no, it's not the one you're looking at because the one you're looking at is one I carry most of the time actually. But I'm gonna bring this gun in. We're gonna talk about it. I'm gonna revisit it and see if I was actually wrong about this gun. So if you don't know who I am, I actually bring concealed carry videos, top five pistol videos, the best of videos, new carry guns, new pistols, new rifles to the table each and every week. If you like what I do here, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit your notifications so you never miss a video from me. Now let's bring in this gun that's in question in today's video. So it is a Glock and I want y'all to pause the video, leave your guesses down below which Glock it is, don't cheat. And I wanna see who actually gets this answer right. Ooh, the Glock 43X. My goodness, have I heard so many people. I cannot believe this gun is not in your list. You suck, I'm unsubscribing. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that, but today we're gonna revisit this because I could have been totally wrong all those years ago and it, it may just be because I really do suck at what I do here. Maybe, I don't know, we're gonna find out. Let's go and get this thing out of the case. For me, I just don't see a real benefit in it, and that is my biggest gripe with this gun. So I did a review on the Glock 43X some years back, and there was quite a few things that I didn't like. But again, we're going to come in this from a brand new perspective. I will mention some of those things later on that I didn't like from the original and see if anything has changed. But essentially, you have Glock's answer to the P365, which is right here, right? So. SIG releases this gun, it's super hot, it's 10 rounds, it's a micro nine. It basically raises the bar for the world of concealed carry, right? So Glock releases the 43X, which has 10 rounds, which is fantastic because that's what it needs to be. Original 43 held six rounds, so it's quite a step up from the original. All right, but let's look at the features and what makes the 43X unique. Now remember, when I talk about capacity, I always get this comment, hey, but you can add this spring kit and make it, you know, into 100 rounds if you want. Exaggeration. But at the same time, yeah, you can do all these things, but we're talking about stock guns. We're talking about when you buy the gun, 10 round capacity, the original 43 was six. But regardless, features here, you have front and rear side serrations. This is a great thing, right? So if you want to actually press check the gun, you have the serrations up there. I like what Glock does. They're kind of, you know, just really vertical straight cut, deep cut into the slide. And generally speaking, all of your micro nines, they can be kind of a bear to rack the slide on these things because the spring tension and pressure has to be uh, increased the smaller the gun you go. But generally speaking, it's a pretty smooth gun, right? So you have a squared off trigger guard, high undercut here. Glock is really good about this. And of course, the bore axis is super low. So yes, that is going to keep the muzzle down. It's gonna create a flatter shooting gun overall. Now, I think some people overemphasize that and they say, well, uh, you know, the high bore axis means I can't shoot it as flat as this other gun and it's just garbage. I, I don't subscribe to that at all. Uh, but yes, the lower bore axis does keep the muzzle down. It's just physics or something like that. I don't know. But regardless, it does shoot a little bit flatter and they retain that with the 43X. You have the oversized magazine release that they started with the Gen 4s. Of course, you have no uh, finger grooves or anything like that, which they don't really put on these smaller uh, compact guns, 42, 43, you know, 43X, they don't really do that. And then of course you have all these little pyramids in here for the grip texturing. So it's not the best texturing in the world, but it does a decent enough job to keep the gun locked in your hand. Remember the smaller you go, as far as your carry gun, you want that gun locked into your hand because you're gonna feel a little bit more recoil.
So it comes with two 10 round magazines, single stack with the flat base plate right there. It's gonna come with the standard Glock sights, which are horrible, terrible. And I refuse to believe that nobody at Glock has said all of these years later, hey, do you guys think we should have changed the sights? I mean, pretty much the whole world complains about them. Nah, keep them on. We have like a billion of them, so we'll just keep using them. I'm, I'm fairly certain that's how that conversation goes, but again, I cannot substantiate those claims. That is just my theory. On this side of the gun, of course, you have an external extractor, reversible magazine release, takedown notches right here. One thing Glock does really well is they simplify their guns. There is not a lot on this gun. There's no external safeties, and it's just a simple design, and it works. Yes, I, I agree, Glocks, generally speaking, are super uber reliable. So let's break down the gun. Again, everything with this gun is super simple. You wanna make sure that it is safe. You pull the trigger, cheat the slide back, boom, comes forward. You have a dual captive recoil spring, polymer guide rod, all that good stuff. Barrel, striker block, boom. You guys have seen this a lot. There's your guide rails, put it back together. Super easy, right? So when I'm shooting this gun, I was instantly reminded of what I didn't like. This is where the part of the video kind of gets a little hot and heavy. This is maybe the controversial part of the video because, you know, when I'm looking at this gun, when I'm shooting this gun at the range, I am quickly reminded of why I just got rid of it. Because, you know, Glock triggers on an average are pretty much the same. Again, I know they can be changed. Stock gun, that's what we're talking about. So they're pretty much all universally the same, but on the 42, the 43, and the 43X, it is without a doubt a heavier trigger. And I'm gonna show you that right now, show you what this trigger looks like because it really does not help the case for this gun. All right, so you have the little dingus in the middle right there, semi-curved type of trigger, you hit the wall, and it breaks. Reset. Super tactile and audible, and it breaks. So let's pull this thing. Okay, so I'm getting six pounds, 10 ounces there. Let's see if I can pull it one more time. It's a little bit hard because of the curvature of the, of the actual trigger there. I'm trying to get it as straight back as possible. Let's call it six, six and a half pounds somewhere in there. So on paper, it is pretty much like all of Glock's other triggers, but I can assure you that it is not the same. It feels like a heavier trigger. Whatever is internally going on here, it just does not feel the same. Now, I'm not a huge advocate of like a super light trigger on your carry gun, but something in this trigger I am just not a fan of. Again, on a 19, the 17s I've shot, the freaking uh, 34 that I've shot, uh, the 26 that I've shot, even the 26, that might be the best example here. It does not feel like this. Even though the weight is about the same, I'm just not a fan of the trigger on the smaller single stack Glocks. Another thing that I notice at the range is the sights. I know I can change these things out, but I can also take a gun like, let's say, I don't know, the Taurus GX4, which has a regular set of sights. Now, generally I would not I'm not somebody that likes to, to, to pick apart and say, oh, uh, because this thing doesn't have a good trigger, I can't shoot it well. Y'all know me, man, that is not what I do. I think you should be able to adjust to any gun you put in your hand. Mm-hmm. Look at that. But if given the option with the sights on this gun and the trigger on this gun, I don't think it's a particularly very good shooter. Flat shooting, yes. But as far as a good shooting gun, no. I can take this Taurus or I can take this Shield Plus or I can take this Spectra Comp or I can take the P365 and shoot them 10 times better than what I can this consistently. It's not a bad shooter, and for self-defense purposes, it does okay. 
you know, I, I don't think I shot it like super like bad. Great movie, by the way. But I just don't particularly like shooting this gun. And I don't think it's as good of a shooter in my hands, in my opinion, as some of these others that I mentioned. Now, here is the other big thing that bothers me about the Glock 43X. And then y'all can run rampant in the comments telling me how much you hate this video, the grip length. All right, so they are trying to compete with the P365. Now again, I just have to buy a new magazine for this thing because it has a little bit of an extension on there. Some people will see this as a positive. Some people will see it as a negative. I see it as a negative on the Glock 43X. But if we look at the grip comparisons here, You can see, even with the little bit of the pinky extension, this is 10 rounds on the 365, 10 rounds on the Glock. It is way longer than what it needs to be. You know, and again, I'm not sure where their thinking was there because, you know, yes, it is almost like a full-size grip on that gun, but it doesn't have to be that. So if we bring in maybe the GX4, which is an 11 round gun, look at the difference here. Remember, this is important because this is what you're trying to conceal inside of your pants. This is a carry gun. That's what it's designed for. And it's just unnecessarily long. I can bring in the Shield Plus. Same deal. 10 and 10 rounds. And you can see how much longer that actually is. One more. Spectra Comp, which is a 12 round gun, by the way. Boom. You see that right there. Now this isn't exactly scientific, but you get the idea. You know, and Glock, I have always praised them on their size to weight to capacity ratio, but on this gun, I think they missed the mark. So again, I revisited this gun. I wanted to see, is this something that I was just totally wrong about? And from the way it shoots, to the sights, to the trigger, and the size of the grip, I can't justify this being in my top five carry guns because there's too many other options out there that just run better, have more capacity, they're easier to conceal, they're better shooters, and I personally like them better. So all these years later, the Glock 43X will continue to stay out of my top five videos. But I want to hear what your opinion is down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.